here we begin our exploration of exponents. And in particular, here we're focusing on integers as exponents. Now, when a positive integer is used as an exponent, it represents the number of time a factor appears in the product. So let's go ahead and look at a formal definition. So we can say that for any positive integer n, such that, so we have n the element of the integers, such that n is greater than zero, we can write an exponential expression as follows. So when we are working with positive integers as exponents, we can say that a to the n can be expanded to a times a times a, all the way up to that nth a term. So in other words, we have n factors of a being multiplied together here. And this is where the number a, our real number a, is referred to as the base, and the integer, the positive integer n, is referred to as the exponent. So another way to think about these positive integer exponents is simply as repeated multiplication. So to help us better understand that we are actually pretty familiar with this repeated multiplication, let's consider the following example. So suppose we're asked to evaluate the expression 3 to the 4th. So thinking back to our definition here and looking at the exponential expression, this is asking us to multiply the number 3 together 4 times. So we can expand this out to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, leaving us with the final product of 81. Now, we need to be mindful here. This above definition is when we're working solely with positive integers as exponents. Now, when we're working with the integer 0 or negative integers, we want to consider the following definition. So, for any integer m, and for any non-zero real number a, we have the following definitions. So when we have an exponential expression, say a to the zero power, we know that this is going to be equal to one. And then when we have a negative exponent, a to the minus m power needs to be rewritten as one by a to the m so that we can evaluate. Now, I want to point out one cautionary piece of advice here, and that has to do with our real number. We want to keep in mind that these two definitions hold true based on the assumption that a is non-zero. So we want to exercise caution and keep in mind that these two definitions are based on the fact that we are working with a non-zero real number. So in other words, since a cannot be equal to zero, we want to keep in mind that the terms 0 to the 0 and 0 to the negative m, or even worse, 1 over 0, these are both undefined. And we actually refer to these two expressions as indeterminate forms, which we are going to explore in a lot more detail a little bit later in calculus. Now, before moving on to some of the properties of exponents, let's quickly consider some examples of these two cases. Now suppose that we are asked to evaluate the expression negative 5 to the 0 power. Now we have to be careful here because we have a negative and the 5, but no parentheses. So we can't assume that that negative is attached to the 5, and we would want to rewrite this as negative 1 multiplied by 5 to the 0 power. Now we know, of course, from property up here that anything raised to the 0 is going to go to 1, so in other words, we have negative 1 multiplied by positive 1, leaving us with a beautiful final answer of negative 1. Now in our next example, suppose that we are given the expression 2 raised to the negative 3. Now, we can't simplify with negative exponents, so we want to apply our second property here to rewrite this so we have a positive exponent and then simplify. So rewriting this as the form 1 by 2 cubed, we know 2 cubed means we're multiplying 2 together 3 times. So this is going to leave us with 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. So now that we've explored some of the basic properties for exponents, let's go ahead and look at some of the additional algebraic properties. 